Hey, everybody, diving into the world of Internet and cloud-first connectivity today with Big Leaf, an innovator in the field. David, how are you? I'm doing great, Evan. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me here as someone who's been in the telco and Internet world for three decades now. I thought we had Internet connectivity nailed down. I thought we solved all the challenges and opportunities there, but I guess not. Maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit about your background and who is Big Leaf. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me today, Evan. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Dave Idle. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Big Leaf Networks. Uh, and I have been an industry veteran, like you said, for about 30 years. I worked at uh, Sprint Nextel earlier in the days and most recently at uh, Verizon, where I brought their 4G and 5G fixed wireless access products to market. So, yeah, I mean, great question. So I thought we figured it out. Um, well, you know, here's the thing, um, you know, connectivity is not without its flaws. And so um, you could have any number of issues that could impact the connectivity um, associated with your business. So if you have one single connection that you're relying on to run your business, to run credit card processing, to run um, really anything, email, cloud applications, you name it, anything that's connected to the Internet, you're you're at risk. And so uh, with Big Leaf Networks, uh, we've got an SD-WAN product that allows you to do load balancing across multiple circuits. We do QoS to ensure the quality of the circuit. So when you're starting to think about new technologies that are emerging right now, you're thinking about Starlink, you're thinking about 4G, you're thinking about 5G. And really, uh, those wireless networks are highly dependent on the folks that use these things, mobile phones. And so there's millions of customers that are using these mobile phones and they have a significant impact on those wireless networks. And so uh, where, where Big Leaf is really able to kind of come in is we have a quality of service over the internet that um, allows customers to leverage the applications that they're using to run their business and prioritize the traffic to those applications when the networks are busy. And so think about um, you know, high usage days, there might be a Monday morning, you're trying to get a lot done. A lot of people are trying to get a lot done. There's a lot of folks using their mobile phones. They have meetings and things of that nature, and that's going to impact your wireless connectivity. And so if you're relying on fixed wireless access to run your business, uh, you want to make sure that those calls go through. You want to make sure that those credit cards are processed. You want to make sure the applications you're using to run your business and your point of sale systems are all running efficiently and effectively. And that's exactly what Big Leaf uh, does so that's just our standard QoS. That's what we do on a single circuit, and then across mm. multiple circuits, we're able to do load balancing, bandwidth aggregation, and both of those things are really important. So if, if you're unfamiliar with load balancing and and and, uh, and bandwidth aggregation, they're actually two super powerful um, tools that SD WAN provides. And so uh, you know when you think about bandwidth aggreg aggregation and you think about things like 4G, you know. A few years ago, we might have said, you can't run a business on 4G. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't make sense. Like if I'm using my computer and I'm trying to access email or I'm trying to use the Internet or, you know, I need something for high speed, you know, data, that really isn't going to be compelling. And so a lot of businesses now are really relying on 4G now uh, because it's so ubiquitous and they're able to run, you know, basic transactions over the Internet. But it doesn't prevent the... Uh, speed fluctuations or the speed cap, I should say, the speed limit associated with 4G. Mm. And what bandwidth aggregation allows you to do is connect more than one 4G circuit together. So up to four uh, 4G circuits uh, with the big lead service. So if your speed cap is only 50 megabytes per second, sounds pretty low, sounds like DSL speeds, you can add three more circuits. That gets you up to 200 megabytes per second. And so that's really 5G speeds. So super compelling um, if you're trying to run a business and you're trying to and, and you're running, you know, multiple employees or trying to access the Internet either through a laptop or different things. You have temperature sensor controls that you're relying on in your business mm. uh, to make sure your coolers are, are cool and your refrigerator doors are closed and things of that nature. And you have video camera monitoring and things like that. You have all these different things that are relying on the Internet. You really want to focus on having multiple um internet connections and you want to be able to maximize that speed um, as high as you can as you can really get it to optimize the services that you're using so um, you know all in all you know load balancing kind of works across that bandwidth aggregation to ensure that the right traffic is going over the right circuit so it's going to prioritize traffic over the best connection 
using that QoS capability, and it's going to deprioritize that load traffic. So think about um, you know bulk data and things of that uh, that nature that can run slower on a slower connection. Got it. Well, there's a lot of interesting stuff to unpack there. Uh, really interesting is what you're doing in real-time monitoring, I think, and machine learning to optimize network performance. That sounds a pretty new approach. You know, how does that work? How does it contribute to a better customer, you know, business uh, experience yeah. uh, today? G- gr- great question. So um, so from a, um, a real-time monitoring perspective, I think one of the key things, key missing things that, that customers really have is the ability to actually see what's going on with internet connectivity. If you call your carrier right now and, and, and you say, hey, I need a connection, they're going to say, hey, which plan do you want? They're going to say, do you want 100, <laughs> 200, a million gigabytes, you know, a, a billion gigabytes? Most people have no idea how many, how much data they're using, what speeds they need, that kind of a thing. And what Big Leaf is able to do is provide you uh, visibility into that. So how much are you utilizing? What applications are connected? Um to your network and um, and really help you right size the internet connectivity uh, that fits your needs. So that real time uh, monitoring not only helps you define or, or actually get visibility into you know what you're using, but it also lets you know if there's a problem. And so we'll immediately alert you. Um, and we have you know high end white glove services that can help you through those issues. So for example, I have a connectivity issue called Big Leaf. We will do trace routing, we can tell you whether or not it's it's something on your end, it's something on our end, it's the ISP. And we can tell you exactly what you need to do to resolve that issue. And so um, there's a tremendous amount of benefit associated with just being able to get that real-time visibility. And then in terms of AI and automation, you know, again, we're, we're uh, dynamically rerouting that traffic to ensure that you're getting the optimal connection. And so that's really what's key. And in the future, what we're actually going to be doing, which is very exciting here over the next couple of uh, couple of months, is we'll be able to run those trace routes for you automatically and make the adjustments without you having to even get an alert from Big Leaf. So if there's an issue with your ISP, we'll resolve it. If there's an issue with Big Leaf, we'll resolve it. If there's an issue on your end, we'll look to resolve that or at a minimum, give you the information that you need to resolve the issue on your end. So all of that will be, you know, automated as part of the overarching process. Wow. Impressive. Well, you don't hear about white glove service and telecom much. That seems kind of a uh, uh, anachronism, but congratulations on that. Um, so SD-WAN is, has been around for a while, pretty well understood. Um, I still don't understand why businesses wouldn't use it, but I guess there are a lot of reasons what are some of the challenges deploying that? You know, if you got many branches, yeah, uh, a lot of legacy tech out there. And how do you, you know, help clients overcome that challenge? Yeah. So, you know, it, going back to your, your your question, the white glove service, right? That that is where really big leaf shines. So we've got automated setup, um, which is completely unique in in the market, and then we also yeah. have white glove support, which is also very unique in the market, <laughs> as you pointed out. So. Um, our churn is incredibly low. Our ratings are incredibly high. Our NPS scores are incredibly high. Just, uh, um, just to kind of give you a sense, our customers stick around with us for more than ten years on average. Wow! So, uh, about 155 months on average is the lifetime of our customers. So that's how satisfied they are. So I mean, that that kind of tells you a little bit about the service that we support now. In terms of deployment, um, you know, a lot of times with SD-WAN providers, there's some hidden setup um, requirements. And, uh, you know, uh, if you don't have your own network, for example, you often have to set up a uh, virtual POP. And so that's going to require you to set up a POP in uh, Azure, AWS, you name it, Mm. your cloud provider of choice. And, um, and a lot of people, small businesses in particular, don't have the bandwidth or the skill set to figure out how to do that. Even technical folks, um, you know, it requires you to do a certain number of steps, a certain number of testing before you can actually fully set up and utilize that SD-WAN service without a network. Because Big Leaf has our own proprietary backbone network, we automatically set or we're automatically set up. So... 
you can set up our service in as little as five minutes. So when we go through the provisioning process, we ask you for some basic information. And when I say basic, I mean, it probably would take you five to 10 minutes if, if the information is sitting right in front of you. So who's your provider? Right. What needs do you need? Where's your location or some of the basic things that we need from you? And then we pre-provision that and that send the device out to the customer within about three business days. It takes them about five minutes uh, to set up the service. They essentially take their ISP routers, plug them into the Big Leaf router. Big Leaf router goes into either their um, uh, Wi-Fi AP or it goes into their firewall. And their firewall generates the Wi-Fi uh, through their location and, um, and it works instantly just like that. So that's how easy it is to, to set up the Big Leaf service. So what's so great about that and what's great about that deployment model for multi-location businesses is that oftentimes uh, companies that have multiple locations, say a paint store or a deli or you know Subway sandwich shop, something along those lines, they don't always have a technical person that's local. Um, they might have somebody yeah. regional, um, but they don't always have somebody that's local. So they can have somebody who is sort of regional pop into the store, spend five minutes at each location versus, you know, hours trying to shovel troubleshoot something either uh, both remotely as well as, you know, on site uh, to get the equipment set up. Um, it can be an extremely compelling um, uh, situation. And so we've had a lot of customers uh, in particularly more, more recently as we've launched our wireless service offerings um, who are looking to leverage the service for branch locations. So whether that's a, a banking location where we can offer multiple locations for redundancy at their banking locations, or whether it's a construction site where they don't have a wireless option, or sorry, a wireline option, mm -hmm. um, we're seeing lots and lots of those multi-location opportunities pop up just simply because the ease of use, ease of configuration and setup. Fantastic. So we've seen 5G everywhere, pretty ubiquitous. Uh, certainly folks like T-Mobile are pushing it out across the country, even in rural areas. How do you think about integrating 5G into your solution? And I mean, I, for example, have backup 5G for my little home business here, but, but how does that work with your customers uh, and what sort of options are out there today for fixed broadband 5G? Yeah, great, great question, Evan. So we are moving into the 5G space fast and furious. And so we started earlier this year with 4G, and then we moved into 5G, two-box solution. And so what we do is we package up the entire solution, SD-WAN, our, uh, our customer support, and our um, 5G services. And so we package all those services uh, together, one price, one um uh, one, one partner uh, being Big Leaf, one throat to choke, so to speak. We pick the best carrier for you, whether it's T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. And, um, and we offer you a secondary backup um, SIM slot too. So if there's any issues with that primary uh, connection, connectivity, then we'll automatically switch you over to the, the secondary uh, provider if they have a better um, service offering in your area. So we're, we're doing kind of all of that managed support for the customer, packaging it all up into one solution at a very, very compelling cost for our customers. Um, and soon, um, yet to be announced, uh, we are offering an integrated solution um, at the beginning mm -hmm. of 2025. So all in one box um, solution could be fully managed to get optimized visibility inside of our dashboard uh, for your 5G um, uh, service offering. So not just the data that you're consuming, which oftentimes customers don't have visibility into, but you'd be able to see the data that you're consuming, the applications that are consuming the, that data. You'll also be able to see um, the signal strength for the 5G um, service mm. you're getting. So oftentimes, um, you know, you're not getting the optimal service because your router is not located in the right place or because you need an external um, antenna, those kinds of things. We'll have full, vis full visibility into that and we'll be able to make the right recommendation for you um, based on your particular setup. Brilliant. Sounds uh, really uh, compelling. So security is, you know, top of mind for everyone these days. It's uh, top of the headlines every day. 
how do you think about network security and I guess your philosophy in general when it comes to a company for cybersecurity? Yeah, uh, great question. So we want security to be the choice of the customer. So customers have different needs and um, mm. because of those different needs, we want you to have the optimized security solution for you, for your business. So we're security agnostic for the most part. Um, we do offer firewall services um, for our, our Wi-Fi offerings. We will be offering firewall uh, for our Wi-Fi offerings. So we'll be able to do um, a level of security that it helps to kind of enable the services uh, to be used in most small business franchises locations. But for those, those more advanced uh, security services, we want customers to have choice. So oftentimes you're kind of stuck with um, you know, some SD-WAN providers that provide their own security offerings, what they call SASE. And in some cases, those can be limited services. They can't do everything well. So they may be offering one particular part of their SASE solution that's really great. And the rest of those things are sort of cobbled together over a period of time. And um, and we're seeing that all over the place. So you can I can pick, you know, several carriers right now and talk about how they built their system and um, and the level of effort required to get those security services set up and what they're good at and you know some of the things that are sort of the more secondary to, to some of those service providers. And so it really depends on what's important to you uh, as a consumer. What are the things that you're trying to protect? What doors and windows do you wanna ensure are closed and not open? Because not all security solutions are gonna ensure that um, you got an extra padlock on that window um, <laughs> upstairs in the right left bedroom, you know, and some of them will. Um, and, uh, and and so we want customers to be able to make those types of choices on their own. Fantastic. So tell us about your footprint. Um, you know, how, is it nationwide uh, or urban, suburban, rural? How do you think about deploying across the country with so many different technology options? Yeah, great question. So our internet back, backbone is primarily domestic. We do have some POPs mm -hmm. in Europe, but we're primarily located here in the U.S. We've got nine POPs distributed across the uh, the contiguous nine United States. Um, in terms of our coverage, um, you know, we our router endpoints go back to our backbone, but customers can generally level leverage any type of connectivity option. So whether that's Ethernet, fiber, 4G, 5G, um, Starlink, and other uh, low Earth orbit satellite yeah. technologies. Fantastic. Well, it's exciting times ahead. Uh, as you head out into the busy uh, end of year run up, what, what's on your mind? Do you, do you have any events coming up? Or I mean, I'll be at Mobile World Congress, but what else are you guys looking at out in the marketplace in terms of meetings or events, get togethers, that sort of thing? Yeah, great, great question. So, you know, the team is looking right now to do sort of a, a big rebranding, a big leaf. And mm. it's going to be you know very exciting. I think what, really the story that we're trying to tell here um, in, in the market is that, hey, we've been around for a while. We have very solid technology. Our automation and services are really what we're going to be standing by. Our simplicity mm. is something that we carry forward in any of our new product roadmap development services. And we really want our brand to speak to um, those capabilities. In addition to that, we've got a lot more exciting things that are going to be coming in 2025. Um, so I'll kind of save that for the next time we talk, Evan, but you know, I've already kind of alluded to a couple of things that we're really excited about, um, but there's a lot more to come from Big Lead. So we're really changing, we're transitioning into a very innovative uh, business, um, offering innovative solutions and really kind of casting a very broad net to capture a large portion of um, uh, the customers that need the service offerings from us and doing it in a compelling, low cost, simple way um, and really bringing it down to the market that, uh, that really needs us the most. So that's really sort of first and foremost in terms of the events that we're looking at. You know, Channel Partners is a big one that we're getting mm. excited about right now. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. We took a little break last year as we were getting some things prepared um, across the organization this year, you know, we've got a really compelling roadmap and uh, brand strategy that we want to unveil and, and really kind of talk and speak to the world about. So very, very exciting times right now for Big Leaf. It looks like it. Yeah. Your website's chock full of interesting partnerships and customers and offers uh, really 
cool stuff. Uh, congratulations on all the success, Dave, and onwards and upwards. Thank you so much, Evan. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. And thanks, everyone, for listening and watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.